Vidyam Bhairava. Verse 33. So I'm starting with verse 33 in relation to my work, artistic work, uh, the inspirations, and how the text came about in synchronicity, which we could call magical or a magical reality, which amazed me most of the times. And uh, in a way, uh, somehow, like a very quick wave of amazement, admiration, uh, some uh, uh, full, full of excitement, exciting that, uh, that this synchronicity arises before reading the text, you have the experience. So the words come in other ways and then you open the book and then you read this book. This is a, a kind of a wonder. So with this and other books, including Spanda Karikas and especially Paratrishika Vivarana, which also has come my way magically. So uh, when I was, I read verse 33, there have been different moments and on all of these different moments, it came through synchronicity. And that's why I needed to uh, specify it, note it, besides other uh, chosen verses, which all of which had uh, special uh, stories which I don't remember anymore. However, those that I can recall, I like to share through. And first I'm going to read the verse in English. In this way, successively, wherever there is mindfulness, on whatever void, on wall or on some excellent person, that mindfulness is absorbed by itself in the Supreme and offers the highest benefaction. So this is very much the same with an artistic type of um, mindfulness. This is not uh, a pre-taught or pre-decided type of uh, mindfulness. It is a sudden click, actually. And here is, uh, there's some effort in here. In the artistic sense, there might be, but when uh, there is a pure connection, concentration, then whichever appears as a part of the artistic work is one with uh, breath. So it is a one with breath means it is uh, there's not uh, there's no thinking process. It is beingness. The one with the breath, one with the inhalation and exhalation, which uh, also ceases. So there is not the inhalation and exhalation actually. It is always that point in between. So that is where it appears. So this is that kind of mindfulness. In fact, uh, eventually, which offers the highest benefaction. So it also means uh, that which is inhaled and that which is exhaled. Eventually, once being, uh, that is then becomes mindful. So the that the appearances or the narratives or identifications uh, that are mindfully being focused at becomes one with the process of inhalation and exhalation and thus they surpass the duality they can uh, at the moment when this highest benefaction uh, Become, it becomes the spiritual experience is here said to be the highest benefaction. That means you become one with the uh, supreme timeless truth. 
uh, and from there, that is the biggest giver of boon. So you you are the you have the biggest gift. You are the gift. You and you are the giver of the gift. That point, the junction, uh, as there is no uh, duality anymore. So junction also the concept of junction ceases where there is no duality. And in my personal experience, uh, here, let's say when we said there is no timeless time uh, concept anymore. So where there is no duality, uh, no duality doesn't happen uh, within time. So when time ceases, one has the capacity to be anywhere and everywhere. And the choice from this everywhere to, uh, let's say here is mentioned the favorite, perhaps some uh, a great person, a great personality, which could have been, uh, according to tradition, a favorite disciple. Uh, so that also tells us that who in one's mind, being a student, the student's favorite teacher, who would be the favorite teachers from that point of view of there's the clue, from that point of view of oneness, favorite disciple, and from that point of oneness, favorite teacher, who would be from that point of oneness, favorite disciple, teacher, from that point of oneness, disciple. You understand? So this is a important point from the point of oneness who is the teacher who is the disciple 